Thank you. It's a very pretty piece. It is nice. Um, so, just a tiny little travel story, I guess. So, off I went to Tokyo, and they um, put me up in a beautiful. Uh, if anybody's been to Canberra and stayed at International House uh, next to the university, in a place very similar, gorgeous. Um, I had breakfast on that middle floor every morning and looked at that garden, which changed over three months from snow to cherry blossoms to azaleas to hydrangeas when I left. Gorgeous. Anyway, it was a fabulous place. Rather expensive, though I did not find, everybody thinks Tokyo very, very expensive. I did not find it so. Um, great place for all of that, just saying. Um, anyway, uh, because, um, the people were so friendly, like everybody was. I, I don't speak Japanese, I'm learning now, after the fact. But um, uh, I didn't need to be able to speak Japanese. Um, people were very, very helpful, very easy to get around. Anyway, so they set me up with Sasamoto Sensei, the Sensei Partners teacher, and that's what I had to call him. That's a first name, but I'd rather die than use it. It's just the way it is. Um, one day, maybe. <laughs> We're very old. I can use his first name. Anyway, so he taught in a in a play in a music shop just like this. So I was so happy when I arrived because I felt at home straight away. An instrument shop selling traditional instruments, kotos, and all kinds of fabulous things. Uh, I've married the train. Um, we sat in a back room. There he is, opposite each other. No music stands. Thank goodness I didn't have to sit on the floor because I was worried about that. I did later, but now that's another story. And um, I learned by copying him. He had almost no English, but it wasn't a problem. Um, and the first thing I had to do, which nearly sent me straight back to the hotel to pack my bags and come home again, it was, it was all about singing. I had to sing everything before I played it. And I can't sing. But of course everybody can sing, so I kind of got over it. I had to, um, because laughing and giggling about stuff like that was not cool. And we did start with the ancient music. And the tune I played when I came in is called Eten Raku, and that is the number one top of the charts hit from the second century. Uh, it's the tune that everybody starts with, and it's the one I started learning. And um, I found it really hard. Now I play it now. It's like I can't figure out why that was so hard. But I guess starting on a new instrument, it all kind of, you know. Uh, Added up to being rather difficult. I started on an instrument which is over there. If anybody would like to try it later, it's made of plastic and um, it's pitched at A430 for the old music. And anybody who wants to have a go, and I've also left heaps of fun things for you to look at. So we started that by singing, and I was told to learn this. <laughs> uh, like, next week, can you learn this, please? Um, all of this is. Um, Katakana um, kind of characters. In in the end, I only needed to know 17 of them, and I was literally learning them in my sleep. There was no way I was going to turn up at my next lesson without knowing these things. Uh, and they just represented the syllables that I had to sing my tune to. And then I had to learn the notes. There's not so many. On the left there are the names of the notes, and they correspond to our notes. And there are the symbols on the left and a few other bits and pieces that I needed to learn in order to play Eten Raku, which is here. That's what it looks like. And I, when I got back, I showed that to everybody. It's like, I'm so glad I'm going to I actually can. But you're going to as well now because it actually isn't that hard. You know, I'm telling you, it's just a code. Like Western music, Notation is just a code. It's dots and dashes on a page, just like this. So I think that Andrew's going to play a little bit. Don't worry, I'm not going to, you know, sing it or anything. No, it did cross my mind. And, and just 
I'm going to follow it through. I wonder if I can reach that. I can. Just, yeah, we're just going to follow it through so you can see how really logical it is um, just before we start. The red writing, ignore that, that's a different part uh, of a different instrument, so it's going to be no help to you at all. Uh, this, these, these are the syllables that I had to sing, you won't hear those on the recordings, but these, here are the notes. And the rhythm is shown by how far apart the notes are. Um, if a note is repeated, they don't write it. I, I stopped asking why pretty quickly. <laughs> I asked why to every, like some illogical thing, I'd say why, and you just like, Phew. Didn't even answer me, like, it was so stupid. <laughs> so there are a lot of weird things like that, like repeated notes not being. And these things, these uh, these things are, are, are just extended extensions so they make the note longer. Anyway, let's hear a little bit, and, and hopefully you'll recognise the tune um, that I played when I came in. There are two other instruments playing along with this tune that we'll explore later. Okay, Andrew, let's hear it. You've got to 
throw out, and I'm telling you, I had to be told many times to throw out all my preconceived ideas, and it's pretty hard when all we hear is Western music mostly. Things like intonation, tuning, forget it. Um, the ensemble has no conductor, none of them look at each other, there's no leader as such, nobody's kind of doing this like Richard Tornetti out front of ACO, just there's nobody. It just kind of floats along. The compositions are like nothing we've ever heard before. It looks weird. Um, the green represents the, the grass of outdoors. This particular orchestra, oh yes, there it is. The red gates separate heaven from earth because this is heavenly music. And um, there's some pretty strange instruments. This is, you know, pretty accessible to us because it sounds like a flute. Um, there are a couple of other jerseys in there that I'm going to tell you about. Now this is called a shou, uh, very similar to the Chinese sheng. Uh, in fact, it came from China in the 6th century. It has, um, we're going to hear it in a minute, there's no picture. It has 17 pipes, bamboo pipes. And it's supposed to sound as if, um, as the phoenix sounds. So somebody's decided that the phoenix sounded like this instrument. I personally think it sounds like angels. It is the most beautiful sound, I'm pretty sure you'll agree. So 17 pipes with holes <coughs> that they have to block off like this. And if you block a hole, then the pipe will sound. If you don't block the hole, no sound comes out. And that's how they control the pitch. But we haven't got 17 fingers, obviously, so there's a limited number of notes you can play at once. It, it kind of works in tiny clusters. The, um, the weird thing about this instrument that you won't see on this is it um, needs to be heated. <laughs> it only works when it's warm. If you let it go cold, the uh, condensation from the breath forms droplets inside the bamboo and it doesn't work. So when I was having my lessons at the shop, they taught all traditional instruments. In the corner, I saw these hot plates. And I thought, what a friendly crowd. They, they have picnics and parties. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never asked anybody, what are those hot plates? They're literally like electric plug-in hot plates. And finally, when I played in a Gargapil ensemble later on, I saw what they do, and they literally warm them by rotating them above the hot plate and uh, very strange look. The other really cool thing about the show, and flute players in particular will appreciate this, it works when you suck and when you blow. So yeah, it's continuous uh, sucking and blowing um, air through the metal reeds which are hidden inside. Anyway, let's hear this gorgeous thing. Thank <laughs> you. 
However, I did find this little tidbit for you, a little extra treat. You can see him playing it now. safeguarding this as, as intangible cultural heritage. Uh, it doesn't you know, exist because it's sound, it's not a building, but they're protecting it anyway because it's, it's priceless history. Um, this doesn't have a picture, does it? It's just a video. Yeah, yeah. yeah. can you show us a picture? And I'll just show you how it's set up and then we'll listen to it. Oh, sneak preview of Gaga in New York. Okay, so th that is the Imperial Palace, and for some been there, I recognise it. And they're set up in rows, it's very hard to see, of rows of woodwinds, and it's the Ryuteki, the Hichiriki, and the Shou. That's it, all is the same. And there's a couple of kotos, you may be able to see them stretched out on the floor. There's a beautiful instrument called the Biwa, which is a pear shaped wooden instrument which looks more beautiful. Sounds, I must admit, because it kind of just goes clunk. <laughs> um, but it looks gorgeous. And you can see the drums in the front, various sized drums, which are not used for rhythm. They're, they just punctuate and comment occasionally. All right. Um, how to listen to it, and where I'm going to give a quick snatch, um, is to realise that it is, to our ears, extremely out of tune. Um, once you get past that, the strangest thing that I find is all the lines, which are vaguely similar, in fact, very similar, um, do um, wander away and clash violently before they come back again. Um, it's not like a choir or an orchestra, and you'll hear that when, when we hear a little bit. And the, be the best example I can describe to you how this music works is like... Um, a cannon, row, 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 row your boat, okay, around. And we all know how that works. One person comes in, and then the next person comes in, and then the next person comes in, and it all lines up in a very clever way, and we think, my goodness, isn't that clever? Well, the same thing happens in this, but it doesn't line up. Um, <laughs> it's the same tune, but it doesn't match. And when I was, uh, I had one lesson one evening, after which I was invited to stay for Sassamono's adult flute choir, just like here. And I said, sure, I'd love to do that. And I was allowed to play along with them. And they were adult beginners, amateurs, learning this. And he said, let's play a cannon. Threw the part at me. We all had a little practice. And I was given part four or whatever. It was all the same. And one, two, three, four. We all came in one after another. And I've never heard anything so awful in my life. And we all play perfectly. And I thought, this is so awful. You know, it's not working. And what's he going to say at the end? And anyway, at the end, they all put their instruments down, beaming smiles, because they, they it sounded so perfect and beautiful. And so it was like a cannon that didn't ever form harmonies or lined up. It was simply the same tune played at different uh, points. And it did form a piece, no doubt about it, but to my, to my ears, I, I did not understand it. And this is a little bit like that. So we just hear a little bit of the Imperial, you know, this is the Berlin Philharmonic of Gaga. <laughs> start. 
자. 
my show. Sasamoto's piece, Ixudama, 